Hello friends, I saw a lot of videos from famous YouTubers about grading or ranking some stuff. Some were ranking the presidents of United States, some were ranking the productivity methods. <clears throat> so I decided to create a ranking video for all the architectural and design patterns. So friends, if you find I'm missing some pattern or ranking is missing. Put a comment. What is a pattern and what is a ranking? You should be there. So ranking is based on A, B, C, D and F. A is like hot patterns, very useful, must use. Chances are you are, you are using. And in F is F is hardly I used and D very little used. So the popularity goes like A, B, C, D and F. A is very hard popular. Uh, F hardly uses anyone. So let me give you example. Model view controller, I think it's a very hard architecture pattern. In model view controller, the first control goes to the controller. Controller manipulates the model <clears throat> and decides which view to show and give process models to the view. So it's a great architecture pattern to create good separation between view, business objects and the uh, code which is manipulating uh, these business objects and presenting model to the view. The, uh, the pattern which I have never used is flyweight. Flyweight pattern design Flyweight design pattern is used when you have too many objects and you want to make sure that you have few objects. You don't overwhelm your system with too many objects. Next architecture pattern is service oriented architecture. In service oriented architectures, you design application as services. They are a consumer who use your services. You may be using other services. It became popular with SOAP and uh, web services. It created a lot of complication, performance or performance issues. So uh, a new version of service oriented architecture is popular called microservices. I will come to microservices a little bit later. So service oriented architecture, I put in D. I don't, I don't see anybody using in the way it was supposed to be used with enterprise service bus, but it may have its own uses. Next is pipe and filter architecture. In pipe and filter architecture, data goes to channels. It is intercepted by some filters, filter enhance the data, filter the data, and it moves to another channel to another filter. So pipe and filter architecture may have their own uses. Unix commands are used. I have seen some data, heavy data processing some heavy data processing processing using this architecture. But I have not seen it very common. I put in D. Micro kernel architecture is in this architecture. You build a code and you build a lot of plugins so that other people can put a plugin for services, other thing. So I, I have seen a milder version being used, not the way it was intended to be used in full form. Next, uh, state design pattern. I'll put in D category. State design pattern is when objects could change their classes based on some state. I have not used much recently. Next is strategy pattern. Strategy pattern, if you have some logarithm, you want to make sure that you can change the logarithm anytime. This strategy pattern is used. It can be useful. I'll put it in C category. If you are using a logarithm, it's a, it can be very useful. Next comes factory design pattern, singleton, abstract factory. In this, clay, in this case, you build interfaces to generate the objects instead of client generating object directly itself. So it's a very powerful design pattern. Most of, sub, most, most of the applications use some kind of factory pa design pattern. Singleton, singleton is another factory or creational design pattern. In this, you make sure you have only one instance of a class. No, nobody can create multiple instances of the object. I have seen its own uses.
then command pattern uh, like in mvc controller is the example of command pattern when you want to make sure that the sum operation is encapsulated inside the interface you use the command pattern is very powerful i'll put it in command pattern i'll put in b category very popular highly used adapter design pattern is adapter design pattern i'll put in d it can be useful in some situations in adapter design pattern you can change the interface so uh, you may be expecting data in some interface but the way you will be using could be using in different interface in that case you can use adapter design pattern to convert data from one interface to another interface second comes cqrs is a uh, i'll put in b category is command query segregation pattern in microservices cloud environment you want to make sure your database is not stressed so you separate the read functions from write functions so that those databases can be optimized differently for read you will create a lot of indexes for write you will make sure there are very few indexes so write operations are fast then microservices as i said microservices is new way of doing service oriented architecture you make sure that services are very small you create services you create services only depending upon the functionality you want to make sure that you stay away from the monolith architecture you deploy only the changes which you are making different teams can work on different part of application without interfering into each other microservice microservice microservices gateway i'll put in b category microservices gateway you need to give access to the services so you need some interface or factory you need some interface through which client can use your microservices you may be using multiple microservices to get job done the client doesn't know need to know all details of the, all the microservices microservices gate we comes into action they protect the client from the details of microservices doing the operation then saga in my mic microservices it can be challenging to implement transactions here comes saga patterns into picture to make sure your data is consistent your operations are going properly next is model view view model in model view view model you make sure that your business objects are not affected how the view needs the business object here comes a view model it protects your business object from the needs of the presentation it has been popularized by microsoft xamarin platform it has been popularized by microsoft xamarin platform next is model view presenter in model view presenter uh, presenter is in charge it knows about the view it manipulates the model and gives information to the view to be presented next is proxy in proxy you create a proxy object so proxy object is is controlling the access, access into real object i have not seen many uses but it can be useful i'll put in c category dependency injection dependency injection is hard a in dependency injection you, uh, you provide the object to the class instead of class initiating object itself so you can write test you can do manipulation and you can write loosely coupled components using dependency injection dependency injection pattern next is single responsibility design principle single responsibility design principle says that function should have one and only only one responsibility it makes sure that your function is small more reusable more testable uh, i'll put in b b category next is a prototype prototype allows you to create a clone of the object most of the framework gives you this capability i'll put in d facade is very important design pattern generally you use with factory facade make sure that you don't have to know the details of the class class hierarchy you just 
build a facade, simple interface, and there could be a very complex hierarchy getting the job done. You may get asked, okay, give me the my payment details. Behind the scene, multiple classes, their subclasses may be working to get you the, your account information, but you may be dealing with a very simple interface. I'll put it as B. Decorator is design pattern which allows to your method to be modified without changing the st structure. Uh, I have not used that much. I'll put in C category. Visitor is visitor design pattern allows you to completely change operation of your class. You don't need to change the you don't need to change the structure. Again, I have not used much C. Next comes chain of responsibility. In chain of responsibility, multiple objects request goes through the multiple object and object C. Okay, this is a request. Can it handle it? And if not, it passes to the another object. ISS uses authentication, authorization, this kind of design pattern. So it can be useful, but it's not very common. I'll put in D category. Interpreter is where you become some vocabulary. You may get some command and uh, initially it the commands may mean different to your system. So you build an interpreter you, who can understand these commands and translate into the commands your system understands. I have not used, but it can be useful in some situations. I'll put in D category. Then next is observer. Observer is like you're interested in some event and uh, you use observer subject design pattern to write some client code, some interesting thing happens and you will be notified. It's a very, very useful design pattern. Uh, I'll put it in B. Generally for integration, you would need that. Then there's a template design pattern. Not, it could be useful. I'll put in D. Template design pattern, you prepare a template so the other people can inherit it and uh, they can write modify its behavior based on their needs final is momento momento most of the technologies give you momento captures the state of the object M most of dot net framework or java sure they give you some way of serializing the state of object and storing it conveniently i'll put it in d category so friends, if you like this video, watch my other videos in application architecture blog. Also like it, share it and subscribe to my channel for your regular updates. Connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter, especially LinkedIn. If you like small summaries of the video, I will be posting a lot of small summaries of the video on LinkedIn. Thanks again.